Alright. We are back. Let's see, what was I talking about? Oh, that's right. The M71 stall helm. Now, here's, here is the, here's the deal. Um, we paid, no, one of them is a Susan B. Anthony. A Susie B. The other one is that, yeah, he paid in quarters. Doorknob. All right. Now, this chick's gonna lose her hair. All right, now here's the other thing that I have to get out there because there's all the time, you know, we sell these things, but all the time people are, well, what size is it? You know, and then they start waxing poetic about, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, I got a World War II Wehrmacht helmet that's, you know, size 64 or something. It's like, well, listen, I have heard that there are different size pots. I guess if you had like a Frankenstein head or something, Fat Head McGee or something like that, I, that's what I've heard. That might just be with the riveted models, the M56. But if you look in here, let me get a close up in there. See that? See those little clips? Part of the innovation with the rivetless M71 stall helm, which is of course the perfected finalized uh i guess most advanced example of the stall helm in the traditional sense as we know it when it comes to using a steel pot this is the end point of its evolution this is the most advanced model to date. Now you have the M16, M17, M18, you know, the, with the bolts, the Frankenstein bolts from World War I, those were the first ones. Then, of course, you have the M35, M42s, and the Third Reich area. You even have later ones that, I guess, M45s, which were very short production, which didn't even have the air holes. I just learned that last night. This was actually designed and developed by a person named Dr. Fry, in 1943, while the Third Reich was still waging its ever costlier, ever more losing ground campaign against, you know, the rest of the world, Dr. Fry, a German scientist, developed this model of helmet and presented it to Der Fuhrer. And, of course, he rejected it, saying something like, uh, we're... You know, we're German warriors, we're not dogs. And I guess what he was alluding to was the fact that the the fact that it kind of spreads out at the surface area, you know, it kind of wide, you know, widens. It's, it's very broad, sloping curves. It looks kind of reminiscent of, uh, uh, what is that, an S, SSH-40 pattern, whatever the, the Soviet helmets were at the time. It kind of resembles that. But it is a completely different design. The reason that they slope out so like this is to help minimize impact. Bullets are more likely to ricochet because the surface area is so wide in its in its arch. You know, bullets are more likely to ricochet. Uh, direct hits won't. They'll they'll hit the initial. Uh, steel but they won't go through all the layers so you're you're more likely to survive there's people who say oh i hate how they look oh they look so ugly oh they look like it has nothing to do with it it's all about the functionality it's all about whether or not you're going to come back with your head or whether they're going to send you back with it in a separate bag but um yeah so in 43 they had these developed they were they could have had them out in mass production by mid to late 44 it's speculated however like i said Hitler was a complete and utter dumbass, not to mention a hopeless, unforgivable failure. So they didn't. And then, humorously enough, in 1955-56, when East Germany began their rearmament program under the new Soviet sponsorship, the East Germans had this concept laying around, you know, something to do with, you know, what, whatever they chose, you know, do as thou wilt, so to speak. They had this design. They presented it to their Soviet masters 
not based off of the scientific uh, con, you know, aspects such as, like I said, the increased potential for uh, deflection, uh, you know, safety, uh, live to fight another day, yada, yada, yada. Instead, they thought, well, it kind of looks like a Soviet helmet, so maybe if we present this to them, they won't be as pissed off at us as they already are, you know, so that's what that whole point was. But out of all the steel-potted helmets, including our own M1, uh, you know, boil a, a pot of water in when you're sitting there uh, fapping away between sessions, this is the most advanced, most... Uh, arguably the most functional, the most uh, defensible, I don't know, protective. This is the most successful steel pot helmet, bar none. The stall helm already is the ultimate. Um, the the PSAG or PAGST uh Oh, whatever it is, you know, however they describe it. The Kevlar helmets that we use today and that NATO uses and even people who are outside of NATO use, those are stall helms, okay? That is the design, the concepts that are utilized, even though stall helm in German technically means steel helmet, and the Kevlar helmets are not made of steel, obviously. They're made of Kevlar and other materials. It's the design that has maintained. And foolishly enough, Gulf War era Kevlar helmets, the, the back... You see, this is a, a, a characteristic uh, standard, that which it comes standard, I should say, on pretty much any stall helm you look at, how it slopes down, kind of covering the ears and the back of the head and the neck. The Kevlar helmets that we issued in the Gulf War in many ways are superior to more recent incarnations because people saw, you know, footage of us in the Gulf War kicking ass. Said, oh, they look like Nazi stormtroopers with those helmets on. <laughs> And it's like, so what they did was they actually shortened the back, making it, you know, trying to minimize the Nazi stormtrooper look. Woo, scary. And it's like, listen, we're not talking about ideologies. We're talking about science. We're talking about uh, protecting our soldiers. We're talking about what works. This has nothing, nothing to do with fascism. This has everything to do with technological advancement and uh, you know I, I don't know just scientific progress and until the Kevlar helmets came onto the scene like I said this was the definitive and it still is but uh <sighs> Let's see, like I said. And you'll notice this is on a female's head. These helmets are also unisex. So, you know, the hammer of justice is unisex. But uh, women soldiers in the NPA, you know, Volks Army, they would have worn these too. There's no distinguishing factors. But like I was showing you, those clips on the inside allow you to adjust the helmet liner to your specifications. So... It's pretty much one size fits all because, like I said, people email us messages. Oh, I don't, I don't want the net on there. Oh, you, you got one without the net. Oh, you know, what size is it? I mean, I got a tiny head. Like, come on, man. I wanted to wear this. And it's like, okay. Um, for your information, and I'll say it again, the liner is adjustable. The netting is detachable. The way that you get the netting off, I mean, you can try it bare bones, dry like this, but I'm going to tell you what, you're going to fry your fingers and, and lose your fingernails probably in the process of trying to get this off. What you have to do and what I would suggest doing and what it has been uh, stated by 
Volk's Army uh, veterans is that they would tick the helmet. If you really want the netting to come off, oh my gosh, you lost your hair again. Um, hang it upside down like this in like a bucket of lukewarm water, a small, or like a pail or something like that. Oh, we got off of there for his base ringing around again. Hang it upside down for, I don't know, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever works. And submerge just this part and let the, the netting get, you know, wet and pliable and then go to pull it off. It'll come right off. Like I said, if you want one of these on demand right now, just the net. People are selling them for eight to twelve dollars, and it it blows my mind because so far every uh, every shipping order that we have gotten from our wholesaler sources, every single one of them, every Stahlhelm, no exceptions, every single one, and we have sold quite a few since we first ordered our our, our initial bundle. Every single one of them has come with the net inside the helmet, shoved in there, in the liner, in a little baggie, ready to, you know, get clipped on every single one. And so many other people are selling these, but wherever I see them, they never include the liner or the, the netting. They never include it. It's just the helmet. And then when I see people selling just the net, they're selling it for, you know, like I said, eight to $12. That's what the market research told me. Now, have they actually sold for that? I don't know. I haven't given it enough of the time of day to, you know, I don't really care, but I would prefer that sort of market research data. However, you know, they're asking 8 to $12, and I can see that. And so, like I said, if you wanted it on demand right now, you didn't want to wait, you didn't want to, you know, that's how much it is. So I just put the net on there because I have a helmet myself that I kept just, you know, for me in my own collection to put with the Panzer Trooper uniform, and I didn't put the net on it. I, like, sat it aside on a shelf or something while I did something, and then either my dad or my mom or somebody, when they're cleaning or doing something, it just disappeared, and so I don't even have a, a camo hook netting for the helmet in my collection. I don't have one. And so after that happened, I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to put the nets on the helmets when I get them, if I get one with it, and include it like that. There you go. That's what you see. That's what you get. And so then when it's sent to you, if you want to take the netting off, you are, you know, hey, you, you paid for it. You're more than welcome to. Otherwise, you can keep it on. You, you can try selling it. Hell, you could sell it for $6. Put it out there for 6 Just want to be like, hey, I got this spare one. I don't need it. 6 bucks. Anywhere you look, you're going to find them. Eight to twelve dollars. That's legitimate market research. That's not just hocus pocus numbers I pulled out of my butt crack. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it's adjustable. And if you're a military collector who collects World War One, Imperial German stormtrooper uh, artifacts, if you collect World War Two, Third Reich, Nazi stormtrooper artifacts, if you collect, uh, you know. Hell, I don't know. Franco Prussian Bundesvier boob job. I don't even know what that is. It's not a real thing. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Uh, whatever. This is representative of the next incarnation and, in fact, the final steel pot installment of the Stahlhelm, you know, archetypal military helmet, which we have since adopted as our own standard, which NATO has adopted. Pretty much anybody who's everybody has adopted this. However, if you found yourself in a legitimate freakish combat, you know, I don't know, scary terrorist situation, if you found yourself in some doo-doo and you needed something on your head just to protect it, you know, just because... You know, you're not a dumbass. When you ride a bicycle, you wear a helmet. When you get in your car, you put a seatbelt on. That kind of thing, safety precaution-wise, these are the only helmets 
worth a darn, and they still are functional. If you have access to a Kevlar helmet, obviously, you know, that's up, that's up here, whereas the, you know, this is, you know, down here, I get, I don't know. This is the helmet. It, it still holds a functional purpose. Um, innocent civilians, refugees, victims of ISIS over in the Middle East and Syria, I bet you if, if people handed out these helmets to them and said, you know, I don't know, stuff starts getting freaky, lights start going off, things start exploding, throw this thing on, find a safe place, and, and pray to God for dear life. It, it could save lives. There is a substantial possibility for uh, life-saving value still to be wrought from these helmets. And I, I've even suggested in the past at gun shows to people, and they look at me like, you know, I'm half stupid or I'm stoned, and I'm like, no, nah, not there yet. I wish, though. But uh, I say, you know, get a helmet, give a helmet. Buy one of these helmets and put a little bit of money down on another helmet. And what I would do as the merchant and as, you know, an honorable soul, I would set that cash aside. And when the money reaches a certain point to where... I can afford one of these helmets at wholesale when we get it. I pick it up, buy it for the wholesale price, set it aside. That's inventory that's not for sale. That is an item which uh, I'm donating to the pile of things which I would like to figure out how do I send this over to the Syrian refugees, to the people in the Middle East suffering, struggling, both Christian, Muslim, swamp thing alike. Uh, you know, it, it it could help. I know it sounds like nonsense, but some, you know, some terrorist shoots a bullet and it just hits at that right velocity and some seven-year-old child who's wearing this helmet, it just perfectly ricochets off. It's like without that helmet, that kid would be dead. And I know it sounds total dumb like doo-doo, but I'm, I'm serial about this. You know, and, and not serial as in... Al Gore man bear pig cereal. I'm talking save a kid's life, save a old person's life, save a, a woman or a dude's life, save a Muslim's life, save a Christian's life, a Jew's life, a whoever's life from the evils of terrorism. Uh, other than that, yeah, like I said, that's the M71 stall helm. I've heard people say M78 stall helm. I've heard a few people say M76 stall helm. Uh, I've looked, and to the best of my knowledge, the only real uh, revision or transitional element that you could pin down as being a new make or model, hence the letter M for made or make, and then the last two digits of the year that it was made. Uh, I've seen a few people call them, like I said, M76, M78, but they don't really provide any information or anything about that. M71 is when they went to rivetless. Earlier ones, you know, M56 pattern, which a lot of people just call these M56, they had little rivets. A lot like, I'm, I'm not going to get it out, but a lot like what you see on earlier stall helms. So that's, yeah, there it is, M71. That's all I know. All right, later.